Hey, this is Redman coming to you live from Minneapolis, Minnesota for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hitchcliffe. Minneapolis, make some fucking noise. Yowie, wowie, ladies and gentlemen. Brian Redband's here, everybody. Hey, what's up, guys? Kill Tony is in Minneapolis for the first time ever. How fucking exciting is this? Beautiful Minneapolis, the final stop on leg number three of our crazy summer tour. We flew through it this week. It's unbelievable. We're excited to go back home tomorrow to beautiful Los Angeles, California for a couple days and fucking catch our breath. We're all on our deathbeds, but uh, <laughs> we gathered up enough of enough alpha brain and coffee to uh, get back up to 100% for you guys here tonight. But the travels have been rough, and we're happy to be here. Back to L.A. tomorrow with Brian Holtzman, and then Wednesday, we're off to New York. Uh, we're going to Poughkeepsie on uh, the 19th, which is, uh, I believe, sold out, and second show added in New York, New York at the Gramercy Theater. That's a big deal. We're going to sell out two shows in one night in New York City at a big, giant, famous theater. And then we hang out at Skank Fest. Big deal. July 25th, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, our largest ever Kill Tony yes. ever. Over 2,000 people. We're at the Fillmore Theater it's there. Huge. It's a big, uh, huge Live Nation event. We're very excited about it. Get tickets at DeathSquad.tv or TonyHinchcliffe.com. Really, anywhere you want. Just fucking Google tickets. We Google don't even care shit. if you get them through a dirty scalper as long as you're there. <laughs> um, exciting stuff. And uh, that brings us to uh, that brings us to here. We're here right now, and that's exciting. Ryan J. E. Belt, of course, could not make it. However, he did make amazing posters that we will be uh, signing and uh, selling for you people if you'd like some after the show which is very exciting stuff. There's also pins. There's Tony Hinchcliffe pins, Kill Tony pins, and Death Squad yeah. pins. And you'll draw the mustache on the pin if you want it's Tony true. with a little mustache. You can have it not. with or without <laughs> facial hair. I take a black Sharpie and I make a little mustache. I leave a little space in the middle, just like my actual mustache. So if you're wondering, it's a, it's, it's a, real, it's a legit Tony Hinchcliffe mustache. So Ryan J. couldn't make it. However, ladies and gentlemen, there is a band on this show. Uh... And it appears as if though there is a legit drum set here. Our friend, uh, our friends over at uh, at Clash Drums, our pal uh, Jeremy, is that the right name? Clash Drums, heck yeah. Uh, supplied us with some drums for tonight. If you ever need drums here in Minneapolis, you ever think that you want to uh, perhaps get good at it, maybe go for a Mexican drum off sometime, uh, go to Clash Drums and get your drums there. Uh, they are the best damn band in the land. Every single episode, they commit to being uh, different characters. We never know what they're going to be. They were in a separate dressing room. Sometimes it's a brand new character. Last night, they were uh, they were um, uh, animal, yes, wildlife experts. Thank you, sir. Thank God you're there. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, sometimes it's the return of some of our favorite characters. We never know what they're going to be. Let's all find out together. You guys ready for this shit? It is the Kill Tony Band, Jeremiah Watkins... And Joelberg, Joel Jimenez, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what they are tonight. <laughs> what? Wait a second, what? <laughs> you guys are painters? This is incredible. Wow. Oh my goodness. How exciting. They are clearly painters, everybody. This is this is a brand new character. This is very exciting to find out that uh, this is what happened to Mario and Luigi after their <laughs> after their plumbing days were up. Uh, hello, Mr. Painter. How are you? Welcome to the show. You guys are just in socks. I love it. Uh, we don't want to scratch up the floor, you know. <laughs> oh wow! Look at you. Welcome to Kill Tony, sir. Yeah. What's your name? Yeah, my name's Toby. Toby, all right. I like that. Well, welcome to you from here in Minneapolis, or what's your story? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> born, and, born and raised here. <laughs> born in Minneapolis. Oh, beautiful. You got a local uh, local legend here for you. I definitely don't have a weathered past. <laughs> all right. I love it, man. Well, we're excited that uh, that you're here. And then clearly over here we have what appears to be a young Jesse the Body Ventura. Uh, oh, yeah. 
mean, is that a cardboard mustache you have? What is that? I thought I had a bad mustache. <laughs> Look at that fucking thing. I mean, they're both true. <laughs> <laughs> the name's Ronnie uh, Pintura, Tony. Ronnie Pintura. I'm just going to call you Ronnie. Okay. Did I say my name was Tobias Daryl? Oh, Daryl. Okay. <laughs> A little name change there. Daryl and Ronnie. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Everything okay I with that? I definitely don't have a weathered past. <laughs> I've never seen an albino Mexican man before, but Joel yeah. is like, I can't stop staring directly at it. This is, uh, I was just saying earlier, because last night when he was a wildlife <laughs> expert, he wore a blonde wig, and I was, I started laughing out of nowhere in the car today. And Jeremiah goes, what are you laughing about? And it's because I was, I go, I'm just picturing Joel in that blonde wig. There's something about a Mexican in a blonde <laughs> wig that cracks me up. And here today, he one-upped himself. He's uh, got a blonde mustache, too. Yeah, he's a little whitewashed. Hey. <laughs> wow. I'm excited to see, uh, I'm excited to hang out with you painters throughout this episode. We have the painters, we have Red Band, which brings me to this bad motherfucker right here. It is the Kill Tony Bucket of Destiny Summer Tour Edition. Uh, it's filled with names of uh, local Minnesotans. Uh, very exciting stuff. If I pull your name out of the bucket, you know how it works. You get 60 seconds on this stage uninterrupted. You know your time is up when you're the sound of a kitten. That means wrap it up then, or else you're going to bring out the angry, Loring Park Bear. <laughs> wow. Sounds furious tonight. There's stairways on both sides. If you get called, just, you know, muster your way over to either that side of the stage or this side. Don't run over anything. Don't jump up on anything. Don't hurt yourselves. You guys ready to start this fucking show or what? <laughs> Minneapolis, Minnesota. This is very exciting. I can tell there's some real characters in this audience tonight. I'm looking out there. This is a very hip, one could say Minneapolis is a hip town, right? Okie dokie. Uh, <laughs> that's how you know they're hip. They, uh, hipsters never admit to being hip. All right, let's get this party started with the stylings of Faith Biktanga. Faith Biktanga. All right, over here, perfect. Here we go. Hell yeah! Come on, people, make some noise for Faith Bichanga. Hello, hello, and it's Bichanga. We'll try again next time. Thank you, Minneapolis. Hi, Tony. Hi, Daryl. Maybe Toby. Um, I'm here today to tell you about my first time to Africa. Yes, I've been to Africa at least once in my life, twice, possibly three times. Don't remember the last trip. When I was there, went on a safari. And, you know, just strolling along, minding my own business. Suddenly, a gang of baboons walks up. A gang of baboons. If you've ever seen a baboon, they're not as pretty and fluffy as, like, the Minnesota Zoo. I'm just saying. The ass is red. Very red. Have you ever seen a monkey's asshole? Don't look too close. <laughs> they have fangs, you guys. Fangs. Me and my family minding my own business. We're just walking along, enjoying our time. All of a sudden, the biggest monkey biggest, reddest asshole I've ever seen in my life starts charging at us. And they are fast fuckers, you guys, fast. All of a sudden, <laughs> I take off. My younger siblings drops, nowhere to be found. We made it home safely. You know, I'm here to tell the story to this day. Thank you again, Minneapolis. Have a good night. Hell yeah, there you go. Faith. Bichanga? Bitch. You can emphasize the bitch part. I am kind of a bitch, but yes, Bichanga. Bichanga. Yeah. yeah chung. Wow, that's a cool name. It Faith is. Bichanga. It is. It's awesome. pretty interesting. What, uh, what is that just, uh, what's Bichanga? Is that? Uh, Kenyan. I'm Kenyan. Kenyan. Oh, very cool. And <laughs> yes. Did you go and visit Kenya on your trip to Africa? I did. I did. I did. Where else did you go? Africa and Kenya and Kenya again. <laughs> third time I also went to Kenya. I have family yeah. there. <laughs> Once you go black, you always go back. Always. <laughs> always. Every time, Tony. I'm glad you know that. I love it. Heck yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me start off by saying you're one of my favorite members of Run the Jewels. So, I'm excited that... What can uh, I say? <laughs> I'm excited that you're here. Um... So wow, when you were on the uh, when you were on the safari, were the baboons like uh, they were? They, it seemed like they were threatening you. They were threatened by us. Uh -huh. Therefore, the like the the pack leader, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, had to do what he had to do. Mm -hmm. And what did he do? He, 
he flashed that asshole at me. Wow. And those fans, now, uh, they're sharp. What they're kind sharp. of uh, red are we talking here? Are we talking a magenta? Are we talking a light red? <laughs> <laughs> I just need to know for the color palette. Yeah, it was more like fire truck red. Fire truck red, fire okay. Truck red. That's angry. That's angry. angry so you're, you're saying that the asshole actually had... Like fangs in it? Fangs, no. The mouth had fangs, yeah. but yeah, the asshole probably had fangs too. I didn't stay too long. Wow. Took off. Wow. <laughs> what else did you do for fun when you were in Africa? Um, I shit in a hole because they don't have indoor plumbing. Wow. Um, what else did I do? I had to walk three miles to get water to take a bath to wipe my own asshole after I took a shit in the hole. Um, wow. We, hung we, out with grandma and grandpa. Yep. Say that again. Hung out with my grandma and grandpa. They they live in Africa. They do. What, they do. What, what are their names? <laughs> not uh, their like. I don't. Not asking for like <laughs> their like. Are they have cool African names. No, Esther Johnston. <laughs> <laughs> Esther, what the fuck? <laughs> Esther, they're, they're they're old and I don't know. Oh my goodness! They so had dreams uh, of coming to America. So are they more of like a uh, a light black, or is it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, a little bit burnt. There, it's, Africa gets a lot of sun. Oh. I don't know if you knew that, being from Minnesota. Yeah. Faith, how long have you been doing stand up comedy? <laughs> this is my first time. First time first ever. Time. How cool! <laughs> Congratulations. Um, I had no plans of ever doing this. My boyfriend's a huge fan of yours, so I got dared to sign up, and here I am. <laughs> wow. Well, that's cool. At least you fucking you just went through it like you you had done I, it before. I did you it. didn't talk about not doing it before and how your boyfriend wanted you to sign up. No, no. I was excited. He's really nervous. He also signed up, so if he gets called, I'm uh -huh. going to laugh so hard. What's it's your boyfriend like? What's he like? He's he's Asian. Is he really? He is. He Shut is the Asian. fuck up. <laughs> You know that black and yellow song by Wiz Khalifa? Yeah, he wrote it about us. Really? Yeah. From the <laughs> from the Wu Tang to the Poon Tang. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah, that is incredible. Asian boyfriend. How Asian long, boyfriend. How long have you been with him? Long, um, does he love you long year? time? <laughs> <laughs> he uh, better. <laughs> does uh, anybody see you walking down the street and they go Kung Pao Chicken? <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe in their heads at least All I've right. never seen such a thing I've never seen an it's Asian man with a black woman before that never happens first time for everything welcome to Minnesota is there uh, <laughs> is there like I mean I think we're all built sort of, uh, we're, all, we're all built differently, right? I mean, there's many stereotypes. Black guys have big penises. Asian guys have small penises. Is there a large amount of your vagina that goes unused during sexual <laughs> intercourse? Uh, um, we make do. We make do. You make yeah, do, do? do you have like a, a screened-in porch area in your vagina that's never used? Or like a sunroom? Or? Maybe, very possible. I might need a new paint job. You got any, any recommendations? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys figure it out. Sex is good. He's it's it's good. He makes it work with his little chopstick. Little chopstick. <laughs> yeah. Nickname is Kimchi. So if you Kimchi. Kimchi. That's wow. my really. What's, bed, your, what's your Asian boyfriend's name? Charlie Johnson. Charlie Johnson. <laughs> and he signed up tonight. He is on the. I list. don't know about you guys, but I want to see this fucking guy. <laughs> what do you say we go straight to it? Why don't you stand back there uh, over in that corner? Because maybe I'll talk to both of you in a bit. And let's just fucking do this. I've never seen an Asian man with a black woman, especially a badass, cool black woman. How about one more time for Faith Bachanga? Let's see what the fuck kind of, uh, what kind of Bruce Bruce Lee shit is going on in here. Make some noise for Charlie Johnson. Wow, sure. Fuck yeah. Are you sure this is him? You're fucking with me. You two fuck. All right. One more time for Charlie Johnson, everybody. Hello, white people. <laughs> so shittiest day ever, guys. It was just a normal day. I was going to go to jujitsu. Stopped into work to grab a coffee, you know. Said hi to my boss. Said hi to a few coworkers. And that's it. I left. Got the coffee. Got back in my car. Just checked my phone. Took a sip. And I fucking charted. <laughs> First time in 29 years. I fucking panicked. I looked around, grabbed that coffee receipt so I could check the damage. <laughs> sure enough, it was not a coffee stain on the paper. <laughs> so I got out of that car, you know, I did what I had to do, and I duck walked back into, uh, into work. Tried not to run into my boss again. He was like, weren't you in here just a minute ago? I shat myself. 
Yeah, and then I told all my coworkers about it, and uh, an older guy I work with named Craig, he's like, man, I shit myself every week. <laughs> wow, Charlie Johnson. Very exciting. Look at you. Hell yeah, Charlie, you fucking did it, dude. That was a fun time. Oh, you, yeah. Did you start shitting yourself so much that you decided to just wear brown all the time? Oh. Is that what's going on here? Is that why you're dressed like a, a UPS logistics advisor? I guess, I uh, guess you're Tony, right. Tony, I'm going to go ahead and guess you ordered that coffee black. <laughs> oh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> wow, it has begun. Scholberg. I've, uh, I've never seen uh, this uh, color combination before, but it's nice. It's nice. <laughs> it is, it is. They what compliment can, each what other. What can Brown do for you? Turns out a whole lot when you met Faith Bichanga, huh? Yeah. So let's talk about it, Charlie. Where did, uh, where did you meet Faith at? How did this happen? I met her at work. Yeah, where do you guys work? We both work at a grocery store. Ooh, a grocery store. Yeah. Clean up on aisle one. Hello. Bag it up. <laughs> yeah. Paper or plastic? What kind of condom did you use? <laughs> That's exciting. So, what do you do? At, what did you do at the grocery store? I work in the produce area. Ooh, produce! Fuck yeah, you got some fresh eggplant ready to rock, huh? Oh, yeah. I like Home your records. style. Ready to deliver that cantaloupe. Uh, you look. You look a little bit like Asian Clark Kent. Uh, have you ever Superman that hoe? <laughs> You! That should be his last name. <laughs> so you worked in produce. What section was she in? Cashier? She was, she was in the customer service. Customer yeah. service. Hell yeah. And then you can, were like, I want some service for myself over here. Can, Daryl? Can, yeah, can I ask her a question real quick? Yeah, Faith, how, step on back up here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, give it up for this beautiful couple. Ladies it's gentlemen. amazing. If this isn't some goddamn Minneapolis shit, what a way to start a Minneapolis show. This is the most <laughs> interestingly diverse couple I've ever seen in my life. Heck yeah. What was uh, your question, Daryl? Yeah, yeah. Uh, are you uh, one of them chassis uh, customer service employees? Like, do you really give it to people or are you, like, nice? Oh, I give it to people. Yeah. Could, could you give, give uh, it to people? Could you I gave give, it to him. Could you he was one of my first customers. Whoa, heck yeah. <laughs> uh, could I sign up for that rewards card? <laughs> That is incredible. Could could, uh, could maybe he uh, come to you uh, as uh, at the counter as uh, as somebody complaining, and then uh, you give uh, you give him a, a piece of your mind, huh? Oh yeah, and a gift card. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll do it. Uh, how, yeah, about I, how about how about yeah, I Tony, do it? You do how about it. I do it? Yeah. Uh, excuse me, miss. You know I have a real problem here. I uh, I I um I fucking uh, I can't. I talked to I talked to one of your associates earlier. I was trying to find something, and they were no help at all. Uh, what's up with that? Um, it sounds like a, that sounds like a you problem. <laughs> oh Jesus! Wow. I mean, you're right. That does sound like a. I didn't have enough. I didn't have enough wow. time to really. I didn't have enough time to really think of a. Uh, let me tell you something, lady. What's your name? Oh, I see your tag. It says Faith. Uh, My name tag says Miss Faith. Oh. Yes. Jesus, my God. Do, do you read fortunes for people, too? No, but I'm the queen. I'm the boss. Damn. That's how it is. You're just going to have to deal with it. And we are out of organic celery, if you were going to ask. Oh, shit. That's exactly <laughs> what I was going to ask. Perhaps you know a produce guy that could uh, get us a fresh batch in soon. No. Wow. I don't. <laughs> so you guys, you guys met at work, and then what? Did you, uh, did you hook up in like the break room or something for the first time? Pretty close on his birthday, which was our first date. <laughs> wow. We're, and then, so what? Do you guys go out somewhere? No. You were, we were at his house. Ah. <laughs> on his birthday. What year was that? It was, was a that? trap, and I didn't realize it. <laughs> now let me. Ask, Faith, have you ever been with an Asian man before? No, Charlie? never really even like glanced at them. But he stalked me. Like he like made me basically. Well, come that's because he works at a grocery <laughs> store. They love stalking things. <laughs> oh yeah. Now hand it to uh, hand it to Charlie for just a second here. Now Charlie, here's the million dollar question: Have you ever been with a black woman before? With Faith? No, I have not. Wow. And, w and what what made what was it about Faith? You just saw her one day. Oh, it's oh, a yeah, booty. Yeah, yeah. Booty. Damn, Mr. Miyagi paints that fence, huh? Yeah. Hell yeah. My goodness. 
Now, are you intimidated by the fact that you have an Asian penis and she has a black vagina? Like I said earlier, I mean, I, I just have this theory that perhaps there, some of it goes unused. What do you think about my theory? At first, I was a little bit, but... At know. first, you were afraid you were petrified. Yeah, I was petrified. <laughs> but, then, but then you entered the 36 chambers. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, Daryl. Yeah, why does this uh, look like if the movie Predator was set in Vietnam? <laughs> Hell <laughs> oh, yeah, it does. This is incredible. This is this is this is how the magic happens here. And Charlie, do you still work at the grocery store? Yes, I do. Hell yeah, both of you do. Yep. Yeah, I do. love it. I love it. Do do your bosses uh, know that you two are together? Yes, they do. I'm not allowed to check out at her line. Whoa, is that true? It's true. They oh, that is sweetheart rule. So funny my god like like yeah. you would possibly like do anything to break the rules right? yeah i don't break rules look at you charlie i got good news for you pal you did a great uh, you did a great job tonight i loved your hello white people at the top and this was your first time doing s- first time wow ever. so cool and that's how you do it you told a real story it's the type of story people begin with sharding themselves uh that's a good first set knocked it out but the thing that I always look for in those sets is, you know, pacing and delivery because your first set, you, you, you know, it's hard to know what to write about exactly. Uh, but, uh, and on those fronts, you did a great job the whole way through. You got the crowd immediately with your hello white people. Uh, and congratulations, man. Did you have fun tonight? Yeah, I did. And how awesome. cool that you got to uh, share it with, uh, with your lovely girlfriend, oh, yeah. Faith. Yeah. There you go. How about that? Charlie Johnson and Faith Pachanga starting off the show, ladies and gentlemen. How fucking cool. Hell yeah, look at that. They double high-fived like they're on Double Dare or something like that. What a cute couple. Yeah. Hey, that's a little fucking prince right there, huh? Live from Minneapolis. Daryl knows what the hell's going on. All right, pulled another name out of the bucket. Make some noise for Ben Roth, everybody. It's Ben Roth. Oh, here he comes. Heck yeah. Taking the long rainbow. Way up high. Hey. Here he comes. Here comes Ben, this ladies and gentlemen. This place is packed gentlemen. tight, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> time for Ben. You know you're fat when you need a plan of attack to wipe your ass. Like, I can do it, but I'm going to have to, you know, think this one through. It's, that's actually old. Um, I recently lost over 100 pounds. I can now... Don't clap. Do not clap. It was not that hard. When you start at four bills, it's pretty goddamn easy. <clears throat> so now I'm just typical Midwestern fat instead of Learning channel fat. <laughs> yeah. It's depressing when you tell your doctor that you lost 100 pounds and then your doctor tells you to lose 100 pounds. <laughs> uh, for the podcast listeners, my, be- my look can best be described as I guess if Ed Norton in American History X decided to morph into his fat fuck buddy and then just gave up halfway through. <laughs> Visual joke for an audio medium is usually a good choice. Heck yeah. There you go. Ben Roth. Absolutely. That was fun. I think there's a I think there's room for uh, like an American history XXXL. That was my right? yep. Something like that. Yep. You lost a hundred pounds and you're still fat. Yeah. Heck yeah. It's impressive. This is exciting. Huh? This is amazing. I've yeah. never I've always wondered what it would be like if Stone Cold was the size of Yokozuna. <laughs> <laughs> if Stone Cold was Cold Stone. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. What what did you change to lose the weight? I went keto. Oh, wow. Hey. Yeah, about a year and a half now. Damn. Wow. That's yeah. so cool. That's like great. what'd you eat today? Uh been scrambled eggs with cheese and Sausage. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Delicious. That's a, that's a good color palette right there. What were, your, uh, what were you eating before to be so absolutely morbidly obese? <laughs> Pizza, fast food. 
Hell yeah. yeah pretty much there. Everything we've been eating on this <laughs> tour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we, we had both bug. of those things today. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> true. We had to stop off at Hardee's was what we stopped off at today. So uh, watch for us to be all dead soon. Yep. <laughs> wow. Ben, I, cr- what I do crap you blood earlier. <laughs> ben, Ben, what do you do for work? Um, I just became a partner in a CPA firm. Wow, partner at a, a CPA tax accountant. Wow, I thought you worked at a radioactive plant uh, in Springfield. <laughs> 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 oh, homie! Wow, that is exciting. So you're a CPA? Yep. Calzones, pizza, and artichokes? I don't know exactly. artichokes. Why would I <laughs> pick artichokes? For yeah, my what? <laughs> It's could have could have said anything. I was artichokes. I still have produce on my mind from uh, that guy. Wow, that's exciting that you. Uh, w- 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 who are you CPAing for? Big banks? Uh, mostly small businesses and individuals. Wow, very yeah. cool. So you're good with money. I guess I don't. Know. Hell yeah! <laughs> All right, what a ringing endorsement yeah. from yourself. <laughs> Goodness, what do uh, you have? Brothers and sisters. One brother, one sister. The brother's in the crowd right there. Oh, yeah. Is he fat, too? Where's he No, at? he's he's she's shaped like a normal person. I'm Really? Wow, look at that. Yeah, that's your normal brother. Look yeah. at that guy. <laughs> Fuck yeah. yeah. Hey, wow. look at that. Represent. Uh, and what does your brother do? He's like a lawyer or something for, Jesus. A, med- for a medical company. Did you just meet him tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he does. I, I know he's a... It. He, does legal shit. I, don't I love know. it. What's your love life? Yeah, he doesn't like? know what his brother does. That'd be gay. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what's your love life like, Ben? Well, uh, 400 pounds is not a good look. For <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so, so it's pretty so nil. You're you're not 400 pounds now. No, no, I started there. Right. Now mm. you're at what? 316. Stone cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like 280 ish. 280. Hell yeah. yeah. So have you been trying to go out on dates? Have you been? Not on, yet. Uh, I haven't worked up the. Have you been on plentyofwhales.com or anything <laughs> like that? Or? Been on. Uh, <laughs> it's good. That joke hit Minnesota pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> no dating at all. No, I'm. No. <laughs> all right. Is it something you'd be interested in doing? Yeah, eventually. When's I'd the like last, to. When's the last date you went on? Yeah, when's the last time you got a PJ, a paint job? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know, like five years. Five years? How long has it been since you kissed a girl? Five years. Five years? Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. Yeah. Five years. Wow. That seems like it's been way too... Don't do that. Wait a second. A a lady just say, me too? No, a lady (laughs) said, somebody kiss him. I think that lady has to kiss him. Yeah. Yeah, come on up here. Give him a kiss. Get her ass up here. Come on, lady. You got to do you it. You yelled out. You it's yelled not out. Her, somebody. You got to do it. You yelled out. Lady, 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 lady. Yeah. Here we go. Kill Tony making magic happen every single day. Wow. Yeah. Hell yeah. He's going to murder her later tonight. <laughs> so exciting. That's lovely. There you go. Wow. Now follow so her to the bathroom and fuck her. <laughs> yeah. There right. you go. Hell yeah. Look at, look at your, your yeah. blushing, you big fucking tough blushing big boy, you. Aw. <laughs> My goodness. Y- you're going to have to stir. Oh, she said he smells good. Ooh, oh, shit. What do you smell like? Damn. Keto? I don't know. Ask her. <laughs> Heck yeah. He smells like scrambled eggs oh. and uh <laughs> yeah, she's just starving. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh, what, what, oh, oh no. Oh. <laughs> God. Why would you do From that? From the paint to the taint. <laughs> he smells like hotties. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Well, Ben, very exciting. This is uh, you've done stand up before. Or? First time First ever. First wow. time ever. Wow, very impressive, dude. Very amazing job. Congratulations. This is something you're gonna do more of, you think? Uh, honestly, probably not. You should, <laughs> man. You, you, <laughs> I mean, that one joke, the Learning Channel joke or whatever, was great yeah, about was losing really the weight. Funny. You have a real knack for it. Yeah. How long did you spend preparing for this set? Um, 
I don't know. I've, something I've been kind of because th- I've, I've been a fan of the show for a while, uh-huh. and something I just kind of thought about, like, oh, what would I say if I ever got up here? You did everything like, right. You talked about stuff that only you could talk about. You talked about losing a hundred pounds the whole time. It's all about you. You're a big guy, and that's what people want to hear. They want to hear you talk about you, and you fucking did it, dude. And you did it good. Thank you. There he goes, you. Ben Roth, ladies and gentlemen. We're having fun here already. Hell yeah. The rainbow. Uh, hi. Judy Garland is from Minneapolis, Minnesota. A little fun fact. That's somewhere over the rainbow. Oh, okay. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Jesus Christ, lady. You must be a lot of fun to hang out with, huh? <laughs> Trying to make Minneapolis sound cooler than it is. Why don't you just go with the flow? All right. Grand Rapids. She's from Grand Rapids. God. I, who would have thought we would have had a Judy Garland fact checker here tonight? <laughs> Did you say fat checker or fact checker? Fat checker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Put your hands together for your next comedian, Kyle Hines. Kyle Hine, H E I N something, maybe a G or an O. There he is. Here he is. Here's Kyle, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, one more time. Good and loud for Kyle, everybody. It's, uh, it's Hano. Okay. I wrote it like a three-year-old. I apologize. I'd just like to start off by saying that I haven't had a blowjob in five years. <laughs> Any? No? Nobody? That's all right. This average side penis will cleanse itself tonight with these things. Anyways, uh... Yeah, never really gotten up on stage. I am a, a drummer, so I couldn't help but admire those. They're pretty cute. They're pretty cute. So is that drummer, too. Uh. <laughs> um. Yeah, I didn't really have anything planned. I'd just kind of been smoking weed and drinking beer all day. So... I don't know, I'm pretty f- fucking high. <laughs> I see that guy as too. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just going to chug the rest of this 300 here. No, it's okay. You don't have to do that. <laughs> Kyle, ladies and gentlemen. Hell yeah. So, uh, Kyle, you gave it a shot. You, I mean, I thought you were about to murder the entire time. The way that you started, you came in with pure momentum, haven't had a blowjob in five years, rolling right off of the last guy's uh, heat. That was great. And then it just fucking all went downhill after that. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, one thing that really stands out to me is that incredibly tiny fanny pack that you have. I don't think I've ever seen a what fanny the? pack. I got it to cover this incredibly average sized penis. Wow. Yeah, it's cute. Yeah. I mean, it's. What do you. Uh, man, I'm sensing some real friction up here between you two. I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Oh, shit. What did I get myself into? I think you know exactly what you got you yourself asked for it, into. You son Kyle. of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Joelberg is fired up. Kyle, do you really play drums? I do. Yes. You really do? How long have you played for? Uh, like fifteen years. Fifteen years? Yep. I, I mean, god damn it, we have to do it. It's gonna be a Mexican drum off, everybody. Oh shit. Tony. He, he can't be that good if he hasn't had a blowjob in five years. Oh, I mean, come on. He was that is I got enough. one last week, dude. Get the... Whoa. <laughs> that's only because I've been on tour, dude. My God, that's incredible. Some that's chick, fair enough. Some, some chick put her face that close to your creepy blonde pubes that you have? That's right. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Joel, why don't, you, uh, why don't you make some room for this guy? Thanks for... My pleasure. Kyle called oh, Joel Burkut. He said the drum set from Clash Drums, Minneapolis' own... It was cute. He's played drums for 15 years. Now, here's how it works, Kyle. You can do whatever you want. It's about entertaining the audience and having a great drum solo. It's about playing drums well, but also perhaps being funny and getting the crowd riled up a little bit. If you win, you become the new drummer for Kill Tony. You fly to Los Angeles, California with us tomorrow. Uh, and, and you'll you're get a blowjob from Joel's girl. Yeah. yeah, you're part of the band. And, uh, and uh, yeah, you're going to be internet famous if you win this drum off because you're going to be the newest cast member of Kill Tony. Uh, however, I must warn you, Joel Berg is all-time undefeated in Mexican drum offs, and the crowd decides afterwards. Sound good, everybody? 
This is a goddamn real deal, Mexican drum off. Kyle's been playing for 15 years, and Joel Berg's gonna have to defend his throne. Kyle, are you ready? Let's do it. Make some noise for Kyle Hano, everyone. Here we go. Wow. This guy's good. Yeah. Wow, he's looking at me. Oh, God. Uh-oh. He's taking off his shirt. He knows what to do. Whoa! Kyle has seen the show before. <laughs> oh! <laughs> that is not Burt Kreischer. Wow! My goodness! Oh! Fuck yeah. Wow! Oh, he drops the sticks. Kyle Hano! Oh my God! And he holds up his fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a championship belt. That thing is so tiny. For those of you listening to the uh, podcast only, it looks like a watch. Yeah. It is such a tiny fanny pack. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Kyle, that was a hell of a job. Kyle took off his shirt uh, halfway through. And uh, let's see how Joel Berg can, uh, I don't know. I mean, he's undefeated all time. Let's see how he does it tonight. Make some noise for the defending undefeated drummer of Kill Tony, the one and only Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez. These fucking buffoons. <laughs> He's got a trophy and measuring cups. <laughs> he came out with a trophy. He's on the chair. He's got a lot of stuff in his underwear. <laughs> I can't do it because of YouTube, but I got a sock on under here. <laughs> Ugh. He has an, an XXXL sock stuffed in his underwear, which are tucked deeply into his asshole and rolled up for some reason at the top. He has underwear that don't, he has underwear that don't fit him, and he is mad. I don't know if I've ever seen him this mad before. He cannot wait for this. Are you excited, Joel Berg? Yeah, I love killing a man. <laughs> Here we go. Here is something you can't understand. <laughs> Here to defend the throne, ladies and gentlemen, Jolbert Joel Jimenez! Oh no. <laughs> wow. He worked the entire stage. crowd on their feet the place is going absolutely crazy right now come on ladies and gentlemen how about a hand for Joel Berg wow. Joel Jimenez <laughs> <laughs> complete chaos <laughs> all right let's see what happens here how many of you have Kyle winning that drum off wow boo this man <laughs> How many of you have Joelberg Joel Jimenez winning this thing, huh? Uh, all right, well, that pretty much makes it official. Wow. Still undefeated yeah. all time. My oh. girl would never suck your weak ass dick. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. You're lucky you're still on the stage, brother. <laughs> I'll get rid of him for you. There he goes, Kyle Hano, everyone. 
Woo! Damn, this party is bumping that here was tonight. Beautiful. It's fucking dweebs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love it. <laughs> Whew. Oh man, there's something about how you played the air for a second when you got up. <laughs> something so funny. <laughs> he'll, CG, he'll CGI that shit yeah. later. We don't, we don't even need to get drums for you. You can just do that. I'm telling you, relax and take notes. <laughs> I love it. Oh, there you go. Back with your hair. <laughs> Sorry, I got a job later. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, one more time for Joel Berg, huh? Wow. Incredible. Place went absolutely nuts. Pulled another name out of the bucket. Put your hands together for Chris K. Chris K. Chris K. C H R I S. Oh, there we go. Here he is. This is Chris K right here. One more time for Chris K, everybody. How do you guys feel, guys feel about cyclists? Perfect, perfect, because I can't fucking stand them. So I was reading a, I was reading a local newspaper, and uh, I saw one article. It said uh, some guy instigating shit outside Rick's Cabaret. He... Uh, Pulls up behind cars, calls 911, reports them. He got beat up by the bouncers, got his bike thrown over a bridge. Saw another story, a uh, guy, bus picking up kids, red lights on. He gets mad, they're parked in the bike lane. So he breaks the windows on the bus. So it got me realize something. Uh, if these, if these weren't, people weren't such eco-friendly idiots, they'd be on 94 taking shots at my grandma for cutting them off in traffic. Hell yeah, there you go. 53 seconds of Chris K, who uh, used his, uh, who used the microphone as a baton at one point during that set. Yeah, you gotta eat that mic, man. Yeah, I don't think he's ever gonna do this again, Red <laughs> Band. I think that's your only time. Well, for the it. rest of this interview. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think he's gonna be up here very long. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Chris, like how the, are you? Oh, sorry, oh. you're like the last, the other dude went through an extreme weight cut. Yeah. <laughs> like My brother. <laughs> um, hell yeah. How you doing, Chris? Was that your first time doing stand-up? Hell yeah. yeah. How old are you? Uh, 33. 33. What do you do for work? I climb poles. You climb poles? Yes. Hell yeah. Stripper. <laughs> what do you do at the, you when you get to the that. top of the pole? I uh, fight squirrels. Really? Yeah. Yep, yep. <clears throat> That's what you do for a living? You're like in a <laughs> UFC for no, squirrels? I, I, uh, You're I, the install, human? I install internet. Oh, cool. So. Heck yeah! You ever you ever fall off one of the poles? No, no. 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 You you go safe. You have like a rope around your waist, right? That you no, like use. God, no, no, I nothing. I mean, I'm supposed to, but. I but you don't do it. No. Whoa, tough guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My goodness, how long you been doing that for? Ah, uh, shit, four years. Four years, <gasps> very cool. And uh, and so this is your first time doing stand up. What do you like to do for fun? You from here in Minneapolis? Yeah, I've lived here. Yeah, before. me too. Yeah. <laughs> Lived here your whole life. So what do you like Hashtag. to do around here? What are some things that uh, that you love to do in Minneapolis? Oh, shit. I don't know. Um, play video games. You can do that anywhere, really. Yep. Play <laughs> video games. Sure. No, what else? Um, biking. Bi- biking. See Starting you. to get into biking. <laughs> <laughs> mountain biking. I don't bike on the streets. That's oh. Uh, where, do you, where do you find mountains? Are there a lot of mountains around here? Depends what you call a mountain. There's Minnesota mountains, but... <laughs> Okie dokie. Yeah. Um, heck what do yeah. you mean? Depends on what you call a mountain. <laughs> I think we all had the same understanding of what a mountain is. <laughs> I mean, didn't you say that you hate cyclists at the top of your set? And yes. the second thing that you admit to doing behind video games is <laughs> cycling? Correct. I think that he. I thought that the this was going to be the case the whole time. The way he was talking about it, it was like he was talking about himself at his own funeral. (laughs) He's like, what do you guys think? I don't like them. Do you? (laughs) Because they could not be that bad. Or maybe they're horrible. I don't know. 
what's something that we'd be surprised to know about you? Any uh, any accomplishments in your life or uh, anything cool? You have anything weird about your family or you ever win a trophy for anything? <laughs> I uh, broke my fear of fear of heights by skydiving. Oh, interesting. <laughs> How long ago was that? Eight years ago. Eight years ago. We're I just... had a job starting at DirecTV the next day. So I figured I needed to break my fear of heights. Heck yeah. <laughs> wow. Man, if I, if I had to start a job at DirecTV tomorrow, I just wouldn't have pulled my parachute. Yeah. <laughs> Straight into the ground. I would have had that Look, skydive be one last hurrah. You know what I mean? L- looking back, that probably would have been the better choice. Heck yeah. You got the left hand in the pocket, Midwest styly. Uh, my notes. very exciting. <laughs> oh, you got your notes there? You took notes on that? No. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Wow. What's your, what's your love life like, Chris? Um, yeah, kind of involved right now. Yeah, you uh, you seem uh, for some reason I'm getting the vibe that you are uh, uh, is you have a how long you, you is it a girl boy? <laughs> girl. Girl. How long girl you been boy. with her? Um, little over a year. Yeah, I get the feeling that you have a lot of like uh, a lot of like masks in the bedroom or something like that, like leather masks or uh, or ball gags and things like that. <laughs> like. I'm, I- you think, does that sound I, familiar? I have a leather hat. You have a hat? What kind of hat do you have? It's a, uh, it's a cyberpunk hat. A cyberpunk hat? <laughs> wow, I, you I, into I, cyberpunk? No, I bought it at Ren's Fest last year. What is cyberpunk? I don't That's know. That's like mixing like old school with technology, kind of like, uh, like steampunk. Yeah, steampunk Sorry, types. Steampunk. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh. Yeah, I don't really, I still don't really You look know. scary, but you talk like a nerd. It's cool. I like it. You know, I like it. <laughs> You're more correct than you know. <laughs> Thank you. Heck yeah. What's the nerdiest thing about you, Chris? What would be? What I, do you um, think would be? I went right past playing Dungeons and Dragons and play Pathfinder. Pathfinder? <laughs> yes. What the hell's Pathfinder? It's a nerdier version of Dungeons and Dragons. Wow. <laughs> how, how, is, how is it nerdier? What do you, what do you, how can it's Dungeons and Dragons be nerdier? Like, what do you do? Like, do you play locking, after locking yourself in a locker? It's, it's, <laughs> it's the same way that beer can be nerdier than Bud Light. It's the hipster version of Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, my God. How do you even find people... <laughs> How do you find people to play that game with? Why did that get booze, by the way? <laughs> like, what is happening right now? I don't he, know what happened. You should be you ashamed find- of yourself. <laughs> this is what this man likes, okay? Yeah, he considers mountains different from you and I, all right? <laughs> but it's not something you should attack him for, all right? Is it on Daryl lo- for president, 2020. <laughs> Wow, Daryl just announced he's running for president. That's very exciting. Is it online or is it like a card game that you can play just like normal? Just just like Dungeons and Dragons. Wow. Pen and paper. My goodness. What a dork. (laughs) Uh, What's the benefit of playing that instead of Dungeons and Dragons? I did it because I had a couple friends who asked and I had time to kill them. So like friends like that. (laughs) Time to kill or people to kill. Friends that play Pathfinder. Like you've been friends with these guys a while? Yeah. And what else do you do that's nerdy, or what do they do that's nerdy? Or you ever see your friends and you're like, God, you're really nerdy, and I play Pathfinder. They, they're, they're all married and have kids. Oh, that's what's nerdy to you, huh? Yep. And you, you that's something you don't ever want to do? Not kids, no. Why is that? Why don't you want kids? Are you afraid that they're going to, or they're going to be playing the video games that you want to play? No, I, I like having money. You like having money. Yeah, I like having money. Fuck yeah, that's an interesting <laughs> way to think about it. I mean, I guess so. Hey, l- hey, look who's back. The couple that does everything together. There they go. <laughs> they are. I'm going to get blonde highlights. Me too, babe. I'll just do it too, babe. I'll do it too. You want to get a drink? Let's get a drink. We go to the bathroom? Let's go to the bathroom, babe. Let's double stack it. Let's fucking do it, babe. Fucking Minnesota, I don't want to leave you and you don't want to leave me, babe. Let's fucking do this. I'll go with you, dude. It'll, it'll, we'll make a real spectacle out of it. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I like that. My goodness. Chris, uh, wow. So what's your girlfriend do, the girl you've been with for a year? She, she's a receptionist. Uh-huh. Where at? Anywhere fancy? No, they do like employment benefit stuff. She takes about five phone calls a day. 
Hmm. Wow. Do you do anything nerdy in the uh, in the bedroom ever? Anything nerdy like uh, any 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 dirty talk or anything like that? Like, man, I'm gonna pa- I'm gonna find the path to your vagina. <laughs> uh, well, watch Lion King and go to sleep. What? <laughs> that's your move? You watch Lion King and go to sleep? It's not my move. Wow, that's her move? Does she play Lion King a lot? <laughs> Every night? Is that night? like a nightly thing? That's her it's sleeping That or the movie? hangover. What? That or the hangover. Oh my God, what? this chick has bad taste. What the <laughs> fuck? The Lion King or the hangover. Is that the only two VHS tapes that you have? Or like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't own any VHS. Those are hers. And yes, they are VHS. Are they? Yes, they are. What? Wow. <laughs> A guy that installs internet <laughs> watches VHS tapes. It's very exciting. Well, I'm glad that you're help, at least helping out the rest of us. Daryl? Yeah, I got some questions. What kind of uh, tattoos you got on your arm? Because, uh, yeah, yeah, what is that? Is it the man in the iron mask? What is it? What Correct. is it? Yes. Ah, uh, it's a Viking, actually, for the Minnesota Vikings. Oh, you're a Viking fan, huh? Correct. Heck yeah, I like that. Um, I actually got to uh, I got to blow that horn uh, a couple years ago. That big creepy horn that hangs from the <laughs> ceiling. You guys have a frightening giant horn. <laughs> Did it? Yes. <laughs> yes. I blew. We, we do wear purple. The horn, and it was raining men because it was a giant dick. The horn was. <laughs> A gigantic cock. And, and our most famous sex shop does have a giant You still dip. are doing it. Do you know that you're doing that and then you do that? And then a that? Like, are you paying attention? To, do you know that you, the, the, it's a sound thing? <laughs> you have to keep it right there. Hey, I've never been on stage before. I'm no, I know. And you never will be again. <laughs> but you, you have used a phone before, right? You don't go like, hey, how's it going? Hey, <laughs> Hey, hey. Let, me, let me call you right back. <laughs> I climb telephone, telephone poles. I use a Bluetooth. I don't. I have to have my uh, hands free. Hell yeah. <laughs> You're a little smart ass. You know that? <laughs> but I like your style, dude. Congratulations on getting pulled out of the bucket. There he goes. Chris K. R- representing the AEW tonight. Hell yeah. There he goes. <laughs> I wish that you would step back from that ledge. My friend, <laughs> my, my friend, <laughs> step back from that ledge. My friend, my friend, my friend. Okay, I pulled another name out of the bucket. Put your hands together for Maddie Kringers or Krings. Maddie, M A D I. Oh, shit. Here we go. Hey, come on, everyone. Make some noise for Maddie. Hi guys, I'm Maddie. I'm a recovering bulimic and alcoholic, so just the type of gal every guy wants to bring home to mom and dad. Uh, my favorite part about having an eating disorder is telling people about it and watching their reactions. My dad was really logical. You know, we had this serious talk. I told him what was going on. He goes, you know, that's just like shitting out of your mouth, right? <laughs> uh, but my favorite was I had to take some time off work, go to treatment. And I tell my boss, and he sits back, and he looks at me, and he goes, so, if you have an eating disorder, why aren't you skinnier? (laughs) That's all I got, guys. Thank you. Wow. Look at that. Maddie, very interesting. First time ever doing stand-up? Yeah. Congratulations. How about a hand for Maddie? Maddie Krangs. Well, that's interesting. Uh, how uh, How long have you been in recovery? I've been sober like four and a half years. Uh huh. And uh, uh, and that's also and that's also when you uh, stopped being bulimic. Or uh, I go back and forth. Ah, oh, you Whoa. still dabble a little bit, huh? Dabble. Dabble. The wow. good thing is, is she didn't actually eat it on stage tonight, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's true. That's true. Have you ever tried any other ways to like you know just like cocaine or working out or something? Yes. Wow, yeah. that is fat person logic right there. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's incredible. All right, first step, cocaine. Yeah. Not eating healthy, not exercise, cocaine. What's the easiest, uh, laziest approach to losing weight that we could do? 
Um, so Maddie, when, like for example, explain to us like when's the last time you threw up and why? Like how, what what goes on? Is it is it because it's a it's a, it's it's because it's like a big gross meal and you're like I don't want this to. How long have you been bulimic for? Since I was 19 and I'm 27. Wow. I was a late starter. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Heck yeah. Is it true that the last time you threw up was when that guy tried to drum battle me and lost? Yes. <laughs> Wow. So, like the most recent one, like what was it, what's that like? If you could just give us an example of the day a day in the life of a bulimic person. Well, I like really commit. You oh, know, uh huh. It's not just like I have dinner and I throw up. I think there's bulimics like that, right. but I will like You'll eat a cake. Right. Like a whole oh, cake. Shit. Oh, it's fucking crazy. <laughs> Hell yeah. My cousin was a uh, bulimic and she like went to the hospital, almost died and everything. It was really serious. Do you, you don't feel the seriousness of it or you just can't um, st- control it yourself? It used to be serious. I'm yeah. not better now. In what way? Like when you say it used to be serious, like, uh, like I would like binge and purge for like an entire day. Wow. That's <laughs> wild. Heck yeah. What helped you get over it? What helped you curb that? I, mean, I went to treatment. Right. And they teach you a bunch of stuff there. Therapy. Ah, <laughs> heck yeah. Did you get to the root of why you became like that? Would you be willing to share with us? I like, don't think there's a root. I think I just like to eat That's and not it? feel my feelings. Ah, mm-hmm. do you have a rough childhood? No. Really? No, I don't, I don't know. It's confusing. Parents still together? Yeah, since they're like 16. Oh my God. All right, don't brag about it. We don't <laughs> have that here. It's incredible. Parents still together. What yeah. do you do for work? I quit my job on Friday. Whoa, right. you quit your job. Oh my goodness. You're quitting everything. <laughs> Alcohol, bulimia, your job. Pooping. What? <laughs> anyway, what was the job that you quit? Uh, I did like event coordinating and marketing for a home improvement company. Home improvement? Oh, I know those guys. Do they you? were on the show <laughs> a month ago. <laughs> do, do you need any uh, new uh, you know, paint or anything like that? No. Okay. <laughs> well, this isn't my passion. So what are you going to end up doing for money? Uh, so I saved up some money, and I'm moving to South America for a while. Wow, South what? America. That's exciting. Wow. Why South America, of all places? Um, I got a volunteer position teaching at a college in Bolivia. Wow, Bolivia. That almost sounds like bulimia. <laughs> that works out perfectly for, me, for you. It's going to be a little reminder of how far you've come. <laughs> Bolivia. Have My you been there before? God. Yes. Oh. So you're going to teach English? Yeah, that's the only thing I can teach. Right. <laughs> but how are you going to know what the fuck they're saying? <laughs> She's not going to teach I kids how to throw up over there. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're like starving. <laughs> oh, so so that would yeah. really be rubbing it in their face. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. I've got all this food, little kids. Uh, you right. can't have any. It's all ruined with acidic stomach acid, you idiots. <laughs> I know you guys are all starving, but I'm going to eat this entire cake right now in front of you. Guess, guess what? I ate money earlier. I'm going to throw that up, too, show you how rich <laughs> I am. Wow. So when are you going to go to Bolivia? Uh, I leave on the 7th. Wow. That's very soon. You're going by yourself? Yeah. You, uh, what's your living situation going to be like? This like house on campus with... Like a 57-year-old Australian guy Ooh. and a 22-year-old Bible Belt guy. 22 what? It's like from the Bible Belt, like Tennessee. Oh, hell yeah. He's going to fuck you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he is. Yeah, you're going to have to get used to swallowing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's going to puke all over your chest. Oh, my God. Brian. <laughs> like, that it's one like even everybody make else. Sense. Everybody else does jokes. Brian does. Yeah, but... <laughs> Puke and poop poop. <laughs> Bodily fluid. My God. That is incredible, Natty. <laughs> so you don't even know these guys, so you're just going to be thrown right into it. Yeah. Straight into a Bolivian house. They have some serious, they have serious diseases down there. I have no idea. Yeah, hmm? I think you should look into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you might are, be surprised. Are you supposed to get shots and shit before you go? Uh, yeah, I got some shots last time I went. Heck yeah. Yeah, who gives a fuck, right? <laughs> okay. I mean, a mosquito can kill you there, but just yeah. shrug your shoulders and fuck it, right? Drink some water and die easily. Hell yeah. 
Well, Maddie, uh, fun times up here. You know, you didn't fill the entire minute, but uh, it's very intriguing. You're the first ever uh, person that's talked about being bulimic on this show before, so that's fun. We're always covering new grounds here, and that takes, uh, it's cool. It takes a lot of courage to talk about recovering from uh, alcohol and bulimia, and congratulations. And what a cool fucking thing that you're doing, going to experience worldly travels, and you seem vibrant and happy and cool, so congratulations to you. Thank you. Hell yeah. Maddie. Kringers, everybody. It's fun. What a fun episode so far. Are you guys having fun out there? Oh, yeah. What song is that? Fireflies by Al Shitty. Supposedly they're uh, from here, I guess. Oh, wow. <laughs> One of the most that. annoying songs ever. Oh, there you go. Pull the name out of the bucket. Make some noise for Ryan Middendorf. Ryan Middendorf. Oh, wow. Look at that. Okay. That's crazy. I believe he was coming back to his seat from outside, and now he's he had to come back around. Now he's behind somebody with beer. Uh, <laughs> that slow-walking <laughs> beer guy. Here he is, Ryan Middendorf. Hello. First off, shout out to Mountain Dew for making my headaches go away. And for, ta <laughs> and for taking the numb, tingling sensations out of my hands and feet. Which raises the question, am I diabetic? <laughs> Not yet. I only have one diabetes. I need all the diabetes. I recently had to quit smoking weed. Not because I wanted to, but because my psychiatrist told me to. But when I used to smoke and drive, I'd play this game called Everybody's a Cop. <laughs> the name of the game is pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> what you do is you stay in your lane and drive the goddamn speed limit because you're too hot at driving Everybody's a Cop. I recently recovered from a psychotic break, ayo! Holy shit! Don't worry, I want to Ryan Middendorf <laughs> coming in hot! <laughs> Killing on Kill Tony. Beat for beat, punch great. for punch. You had me at Mountain Dew gets rid of my headaches. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. Thanks. Uh, you're great, man. You've been doing this a few years? Uh, I've been doing it for like two years. Hell yeah, dude. You are rock solid. That is incredible. All here in Minneapolis? Uh, St. Cloud. Where the fuck is that? St. <laughs> Cloud. It's like an hour. It's like a half hour uh, north of here. It's like 65,000 people. So What I'm the like, fuck are you doing there? <laughs> why, are, why are you there? You moved there or you're from there? Actually, I moved from Long Prairie. That's an hour north of there. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're well, basically a fucking Canadian, dude. What's happening here? I grew up on a dairy farm out there, and like I drove an hour and a half. I drove an hour to lot to St. Cloud every week to do an open mic down there, and wow. then I'd go like two hours to Minneapolis to do the mics down here. Wow. God damn, that is so fucking cool. <laughs> and you do this regularly. Uh huh. That is awesome. <laughs> And your pa you said you grew up on a dairy farm. That's what your dad does? Yeah. He's a dairy farmer. Yeah. He has cows? Uh-huh. How many? 70. Is it 70 cows? Yeah. My goodness, does he have any bison? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> My brother goes to NDSU. <laughs> so, I don't even know what that means, but he got a laugh, and I like it. <laughs> wow. What do you do for work, Ryan? Uh, I work at Taco Bell at the moment. Get the fuck out of here. No way. No way. Oh, my God. Authentic Mexican food. What do you... <laughs> What do, you, what do you think about that? Uh, what do you think about that, Ronnie? This guy works at Taco Bell. You got a little bit of... I prefer Taco John's. <laughs> <laughs> Since you drive so much for stand-up and you work at Taco Bell, have you ever thought of maybe just going to like a city that has more stand-up in it you know, and more Taco Bells? You know, I've, inter I've entertained the thought. Yeah. <laughs> really? You, you never thought outside the bun before? <laughs> I actually put together my own show in Long Prairie once a month for my people back there. Your Wait, people? What, what do you yeah. mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Like a clan rally? <laughs> what, do you, <laughs> no, what do you mean, your people? 
<laughs> what is this? You guys trying to make America great again up there? What's <laughs> happening? <laughs> No, you, I just like, how many people show up to your comedy show at Long Prairie? Uh, like fifty or a hundred. I mean, do, it seems like that would be like a lot of like hillbillies, right? Like you're like I, you're like I I I have diabetes, and they're like me too. <laughs> well, why are you why are you why are you talking in the mic? Why don't you sing a song or something? Do they have any idea what the fuck you're doing? <laughs> Stand up! I don't get it. There's some guy talking in this bar. He won't shut the fuck up. He's got a microphone, speakers. He's annoying. I love it. But they get it, you say, huh? They have fun? Oh, yeah. You have a wacky name for your comedy show? It's just called Comedy at the 12 Mile. Comedy at the 12 <laughs> Mile. Heck, yeah. yeah. It's like uh, it's like if Eminem was a uh, nerdy diabetic, dude. I love it. How long have you worked at Taco Bell? Uh, it's been about, like... Uh, a couple weeks. Couple weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. How old are you? Twenty-three. I'm turning twenty-four next week. Twenty-three. You're very funny for twenty-three, <laughs> dude. What did you do before Taco Bell? I was working construction. Wow. And then he realized you'd rather do anything <laughs> other than that. <laughs> Money <laughs> doesn't matter to you. It's just you don't want to be in phys physical break backing work, especially since you have headaches that only Mountain Dew can cure. Wow. It's for the Mountain Dew, isn't it? I got a limited Baja Blast. It's a oh, nice oh my God. <laughs> wow. This is incredible. This is incredible. Uh, uh, construction uh, sucked, dude. Uh, Those guys are all dicks. Yeah. <laughs> like, when you said unlimited Baja Blast, by, uh, Brian came in his pants. No, that's, <laughs> that's fucking hilarious. Heck yeah. Spe speaking of that, when was the last time you Baja finger blasted a girl? Oh, hey. shit. <laughs> last it's night. Where, it's where oh. you, it's where, Last night. Wow. You have a girlfriend. Uh-huh. How long you been with her? I love the way you answer questions, by the I way. I know. You're so happy. You're so excited. Look how happy this it, fucking guy and is. And he, he laughs after every single thing he says. Yeah. <laughs> this is I've like been dating her for like four months. What fucking cartoon character do you remind me of? What's that? Do, is it a Dex? It's not Dexter. What's it called? Uh, Dexter it's like the a boy comic. Toy? No, he reminds me of one of those like comic, like not Archie? not cartoons. It, no, it's not Doug. It, Delbert. That's the fucking one. Delbert. Who also said that Dilbert? Delbert? Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, Dilbert. Yeah. Dilbert. Yeah. Dildo. Has anybody ever told you you look like fucking Dilbert? No. <laughs> There it is. It took me a little while to figure it out. And by me figuring it out, I mean four people in the audience. What's your girlfriend Shut do? Up, lady. Uh, fucking women are chimey. Ever since Hillary lost, it's like, it's like, it was me that thought of that. Um, She's from Grand Rapids. <laughs> Guys aren't right about everything. It's a fucking lot of men on this show. I have blue hair. It was me. <laughs> Bunch of crazy women here tonight. Shut the fuck up, lady. Oh, look at your, it, your tiny, tiny little middle finger. It's actually finger. more of a, uh, right. uh, 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 like a uh, magenta dark purple hair. Hey, I like that. See, work to talk about. Shut the fuck up, lady. Oh my god, what is wrong with you? I won't be silenced. <laughs> What's your girlfriend do? Uh, well, she was. Uh, she did a lot of things. She was a paralegal for a while when we started dating, and then. Mm -hmm. When we were living on the farm together, she was working at a drug and rehab center. Mm. And then we moved back to Monticello, and she's oh, uh, fancy. currently unemployed. <laughs> wow. Wow. Currently unemployed. So you're, you're, you're working at Taco Bell double like time the, over there, huh? I'm the tortilla winner of this thing. <laughs> hey, <laughs> fuck yeah. Ah. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> My goodness gracious. How exciting. So uh, <laughs> you've been with her for four months. And uh -huh. uh, where'd you meet her at? A comedy show. A comedy show. Heck yeah. And, you, and, th and then uh, then what? You, you went out that night, had yeah. some drinks, munched yes. on her gordita. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to put it in her chalupa, but she wouldn't <laughs> let you. And she's like, this pussy is fire. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's exciting. You have any uh, secret maneuvers that you do in the bedroom? That yeah, you can like teach a us? combo that you can teach us. <laughs> yeah, like, a nut, like the cinnamon twist or something like that. The old uh, Trout Trout Supreme. The old fucking uh, Baja blast on her ass. Wow, <laughs> Jesus. 
Uh, I got this thing hey, that I call the extreme scissor that I only did like once because it was uncomfortable. What? Hold on. This is great. This is the first time anybody's actually answered this question, by the way. A fun fact. I've been asking it almost once an episode for years. Is there any special secret maneuvers that you have in the bedroom? Everybody always looks at me like I'm an idiot. And then finally we find out about the what the fuck did you call it? Extreme scissors? Yeah, extreme it was scissors. all worth it. Every time I've asked it was worth it for this moment when we find out in Minneapolis, Minnesota, what the fuck is extreme scissoring? Because it sounds like your balls must hurt after that. Yeah, they do. It's like, it's like you know, like when lesbians scissor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. Rub their vaginas together. It's like that, except my penis is in her vagina. <laughs> penis is in the vagina. So you, you, yeah, you, you're both laying down. <laughs> So you sort of have to like get up on. T Are you guys gonna reenact this for the audience? Hell <laughs> oh, yeah! Absolutely, doodly. So he can position us. Right. Make sure these guys get it right. We're gonna find out extremely well. Jeremiah, what you want to be the big scissor or the little scissor? <laughs> I, I think. I don't think you guys have much Aaron of a choice here. a big here. scissor. All right. All right, boys. Oh. Assume your positions. Wow. This is uh -huh. so. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Sometimes. So, so, that, so, 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 Dilbert, help them out. Show them what to do. Are you the, are you, wait, what? Just go at it, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> this show is out of control. Oh my god. Extreme scissoring. Where did you learn that? How about a hand for the band, guys? Come on. <laughs> These guys will do anything to make you laugh here tonight. <laughs> it's, it's actually a sickness. <laughs> they my, definitely... Uh, my I felt, <laughs> I felt my balls go inside his balls like this. <laughs> oh, no. Odds are that was probably just one large white sock that you felt. Uh. <laughs> so, like, you do that, but you actually come after that? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't make it that far. My dick bent at a weird angle, and we're like, no, fuck this. We're out of the... <laughs> actually, I broke my dick, and it was, like, funny, huh? <laughs> Wow, Ryan, you are a monster, dude. That is so fucking exciting. I would love to see him in Los Angeles playing yeah, at the comedy great. store. That would yeah, be so you'd have fun. To, uh, <laughs> yeah. That would be something. Unfortunately, I don't think he's ever going to make to Los Angeles. He, uh, he has, uh, has full-blown diabetes, guys. He... He lives in fucking, uh, what's it called again? I live in Monticello, St. Cloud, yeah. That's my scene. Heck yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Nobody <laughs> calls Monticello a scene. <laughs> I love that. I think you have to, I think, you know, I, I mean, you eventually you'll get to Los Angeles, right? Baby steps. You start off in Monticello, maybe work your way up to like Brooklyn Center or something like that. Uh, and, uh,. <laughs> And then eventually you'll be out there. But I'll tell you what, um, in lieu of all of this, if you ever do make it out to Los Angeles, California, hit us up and uh, we will throw you up on uh, <laughs> at the Comedy Store on the Sunset Strip. You're going to have to explain to your dairy farmer family what the fuck you did here tonight. So just uh, let us know if you ever make it out there, huh? And make sure Hell we're yeah. in town also. So, Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Look at our schedule beforehand. I feel like, that, I feel like you're going to smile like that for the rest of your life. Oh, like. You sleep like that. You wake up like that. I like your fucking style, dude, from beginning to end. Every single answer, every single joke. Uh, yeah, golden ticket, I guess we yeah. could call it, right? That's it. Minneapolis. <laughs> How about one more time for him? Ryan Middendorf. Is it Dorf or Dolph? Dorf. Come on, Ryan Middendorf, everybody. That's your uh, fourth or fifth ever golden ticket winner. This is 
this episode's had everything so far. A little bit of everything. This is fucking crazy. We've had a Mexican drum off. We've had a golden ticket winner. We've had extreme scissoring. We've had a bulimic lady. We had we had a black woman that fucks a little Asian guy. I extreme scissored one of my best friends. Yeah. We had a guy talk about how much he hates cyclists only to admit that he's a cyclist. <laughs> this is crazy. All right, I pulled another name out of the bucket. Make some noise for Jake Elfman, everyone. El- Jake Elfman. Here we go. Come on. Jake Elfman, where is he? Here he comes, everyone. Come on, make some fucking noise. You guys giving up on me? So I don't think you should be able to call yourself a health coach if you peer pressure your friends and buying shit from you. Um, if you call yourself a health coach because you sell Herbalife, that's very similar to me saying that I'm a boxer because I got beat up in high school. <laughs> um, I think that w- it's time that we bring back the show Cash Cab, but this time we might have to spice it up a little bit and call it Crash Cab. Same concept, except Ben Bailey swerves into oncoming traffic if you get the question wrong. <laughs> Uh, my family members eat roadkill. Not just any roadkill. They will only pick roadkill if they know who hit it or if they hit it. Uh, we have standards. Um, I'm from out by where the last guy was, so that's all they got. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. Jake Elfman. Welcome, welcome. Thanks, man. Heck yeah. Uh, you have a uh, you have a little bit of an interesting look. You remind me of the kid from uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street one with that. Uh, yeah. Remember that creepy kid? Yeah. Has uh, anyone ever told you you look like the creepy kid from Nightmare on Elm Street? Like, I, get, I think it's called like the Dreamcatcher one or yeah. something like that. Dreamcatcher. Like, right? Yeah. <laughs> How yeah. the fuck? I've never part three. I've, right? I haven't thought of this. In Dream I've, Warriors. Yeah. <laughs> look at you! Wow, Nightmare on yeah. Elm Street. I might have it wrong, but I said it <laughs> confidently, and that's all that matters. <laughs> I'm actually cast in the remake, so. What's that? I'm cast in the remake. Oh, very cool. Heck yeah. I've Heck never gotten you. that compliment, but uh, I have gotten before that I look sick a lot, so. Yeah. 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 You I'm look not. exactly like Pete Davidson, and he looks sick eternally. <laughs> Which is incredible that we even all know who the fuck that guy is. Um, <laughs> no shit. Gives me hope. He, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, Jake, um, first time doing stand up? It is. Congratulations to you, my friend. Something you've always wanted to do? Yeah, I've listened to the show a lot, uh, and then when I heard you guys were coming to town, I just knew I had to sign up. If Fuck I can. yeah. How old are you? 25. 25 years old. What do you do for work? Uh, I'm going to grad school right now. Yeah, what are you studying? Nutrition and exercise science. Nutrition and exercise. Do you ever practice what you preach? Uh, I try to, yeah. You look like you have a lot of vitamin deficiency going on. <laughs> you ever recommend cocaine to people? <laughs> yeah. Like our senior health correspondent here, Dr. Redband. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you got for me? Cocaine. Lot of there co- you go. That's his recommendation. You said your family only eats roadkill if they know who kid it hit. What? What'd you say? Uh, so back from where I'm from, very similar to the last guy, uh, kind of redneck, hillbilly style people. And we can tell. Yep. And so there are situations if where if someone hits an animal, they will take it home and eat it. Mm-hmm. And if they know who hit the animal, or if they see it got hit right in front of them, they'll take it home. Mm-hmm. So. So yeah. hunting. <laughs> Yeah, hunting with the grill of your car, yeah. Hell yeah. Dope. Uh, what do you like to do for fun? You're 25. You're born and raised here in Minneapolis? Uh, no, actually, not too far away from St. Cloud, the last guy. Uh-huh. What's the name of your city? Uh, Maple Lake, Minnesota. Maple Lake. <laughs> fuck yeah. Canadian as fuck. <laughs> you Starting betcha. to realize we're in Canada. Yeah. This is basically just an extend. This is the panhandle of... <laughs> Canada. We are the Canada of America, yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, so what do you like to do for fun? Uh, right now, just going to school takes up a lot of my time. I got engaged, so I spend a lot of time with my fiance. Wow, 25 and engaged. That's incredible. How long have you been with her? Uh, about two years. Two years, and you met in college? Yep, uh, during our undergrad, kind of during our final project. Is there a reason why uh, you decided to get married so quick? 
Uh, it's the most cliche shit in the world, but when you meet the person, you just know you know. Hey, I agree. Yeah. I'm absolutely with you. I married my wife after knowing her for only a few months. Yeah, there's not uh, a couple people question it, but I just tell them you must not feel that confident in your relationship. So. You're damn motherfucking yeah. right, my little friend. I like your style. Absolutely, turn it back on and make yeah. them feel all weird and shit. Like, oh, <laughs> happens a lot. So that's exciting. What is she studying? She actually was going to school for the same thing. For uh, I'm going to school to be a registered dietitian, and mm-hmm. then she'll be doing the same thing. So. Oh, wow. So you're both going to be women after you graduate. <laughs> that's exciting. Very exciting. It's going to be a lesbian relationship. May yeah. I recommend extreme scissoring uh, in your future? <laughs> it is Daryl approved. I mean, there must be some things that you do for fun, right? To take yeah. your mind off of the schoolwork and... Uh, I have a motorcycle. Uh, Damn, look at you. <laughs> really? A full-size motorcycle? No, just a little bitch Honda. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a big boy bike yet. So. Yeah, you seem like you just have a motor on your bicycle. Just <laughs> <laughs> those annoying fucking things. Uh, wow, my goodness. You ever take uh, your girlfriend for rides on the back of it? She's been on it a couple times. I never told her, but she was actually like the first passenger I had on it until after that ride. Uh, so she didn't yeah. appreciate that, but... Right, and is it true that uh, that it's that it's easy to have sex with a girl after giving her a ride on the motorcycle? They get a little bit horny from the vibration in between their legs. I don't know if she needs that, but we got that going. When for you me. say you don't know if she needs that, you're saying your girl's horny a lot. Depends on the day, but usually. What do you mean depends on the day? Is she? Uh, it's called fucking... a period. <laughs> Daily periods. I, I, I would I would say depends on the week yeah. if I if that's what I was saying yeah. I mean uh, but it, it that's what you were referencing yeah if you love your woman you go there any day of the week hey, hey yeah. don't you don't have to tell me buddy well, I'm not questioning it I was just wondering what you meant like so listen, she only fucks on Fridays I like, prefer I it listen I would but it is literally a work hazard I'm wearing all white here <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem painting the sheets hey. I love it. So uh, that's a lot of fun. That's very exciting. What was your name again? Jake Elfman. Daryl. Jake (laughs) Elfman. Heck yeah. Is there anything else we should know about you? Any fun facts? You ever save anybody's life or almost die or anything like that? Uh, If I'm ever asked a fun fact, I just tell people I had heart surgery twice. Once when I was 12 and again when I was 13. Is that true? (laughs) Boring. Wow. Heart surgery at 12 and 13. What was that for? Super uh, ventricular tachycardia? Uh, no, it was coarctation of the aorta was the name of the Corta- disorder. Cor- so basically, the part that comes off the top of the heart was twisted. Right, right. And why two surgeries? It didn't heal well the first time? Uh, the valve had to be repaired on the second surgery. Damn, damn. And uh, how long is the recovery for that? Three weeks, four weeks, something like that in the hospital? Uh, the first surgery, I was in the hospital for two weeks. And the second, I was out in like five days. Wow, that's great. Yeah, so it just kind of... Uh, whenever people are like, oh, you look so sick and skinny. I'm just kind of like, yeah, yeah. I do you have that. a cool scar from your heart surgery? Yeah, I have one right on my chest. And Can then you show us? Would you mind yeah. showing us? Let's see those fucking man tits, dude. Let's do this shit. What do we got there? Let me see that thing. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. That sort of... You can't really see it on a white guy. You're really just missing a little bit of chest hair in the middle. You're Really, your chest looks like my mustache. That's yeah. pretty much what... In between. What we just learned. Well, that's fun, dude. You had your first time on stage. Wow. Very cool stuff. You're fucking 25 years old. Nutrition and exercise fucking... Re- you're going to be a dietitian. That's so fucking cool. Looks like everything's smooth. Congratulations. Joel Did Bert? you go into dietitian stuff because it matters with your heart? Like you're trying to stay healthy because of that? Yeah. After my surgeries, I just lost a bunch of weight. And it was a meeting with the dietitian that kind of taught me uh, what I needed to do in my lifestyle habits to make myself healthier. Okay. So after that, it just kind of turned into one of those things where if I can explain that to other people, I'll do right. that for a living. Maybe you can explain that to uh, to our little friend, uh, Ryan. He, um, he may have diabetes. <laughs> Maybe you can help him out. His I'll find him after Ryan the show. Ryan Middendorf, so go track him down. Uh, Jake, thank you so much. So nice to meet you, dude. There he goes. Come on. Jake Elfman. Fun show so far. I'm excited about this. What song is that? Walk a flock of heart in the paint. <laughs> what? Walk a flock of Daryl. I'm surprised you know that yeah, one. Yeah, I'm from Minnesota. Wow. I love it. Okay, pulled another name out of the bucket. Make some noise for your next comedian, Casey Flesh. Casey 
Flash, everybody. There he is. Here we go. Here's Casey, everyone. Fuck yeah. Hey, everybody. Hi, hi. Thank you for coming to my show. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can tell. You guys probably can't over there, but you guys might be able to. Uh, on Tuesday, I woke up and I had Bell's palsy, right? Like, the left side of my face doesn't work. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever had one of those days where you wake up, you look in the mirror, and you're like, fuck, I gotta go to the hospital. You probably have, Daryl, but... <laughs> it sucks having half a face, right? Like, the, the biggest part, like, the, the biggest problem I have is I can't, like... I can't, like, have sex with a lady, right? Because I like to talk when I have sex. And, like, now I can't say the right words, right? Because I'm just like, oh, yeah, that feels so fucking good. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, I love your boobs. Like, it doesn't... It doesn't work, right? Like, if I go down on her, I got to do one side at a time. Like... <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's it. Thank you. Fucking awesome, dude. Hell yeah. Incredible. Casey Fletch. So that really happened to you on Tuesday? Uh, well, actually, it was like a month ago, but a it's month ago. funnier and, if it's recent. And they, and they treated it and everything? How, how soon after it happened did you get to the hospital? I know that you only have so much time to treat that or else it gets stuck that way, right? Well, uh... I went to, like a day. Somebody and a half. thought that was a joke. They yeah, don't yeah, know yeah. anything about Bell's policy over there. Someone's just <laughs> cracking up. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, I I had a cousin used to cross his eyes a lot as a kid. It stuck. Yeah, <laughs> come on. So uh, so Casey, tell us about it. Tell us about the Bell's palsy. I'm uh, I I'm I'm very uh, intrigued by this subject because. As a uh, pro wrestling fan, especially as a kid, there was uh, the main Ross. announcer, Jim Ross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can, uh, what, I guess he... He's a personal hero of mine. Yeah. yeah. No, mine too. I almost got to work with him a couple weeks ago at the Roast of Brick Flair, but it got canceled. It nah, was uh, going to be one of my, uh, one of the coolest <laughs> moments of my life. He had but, a stroke, uh, didn't he? No, he had to have some... Uh, he had to... He pulled a... Uh, he was like Jake Elfman, had to have a couple quick heart surgeries real quick. Uh, Ric Flair has had some fun in his days. Anyway, one of the Mondays, Monday Night Raw started, and uh, JR, who uh, was always just normal face down south, like, by God, this is crazy. One week, he just came on. He's like, blah, 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 I'm stricken my mouth ballsy. And like I was a little kid, and I'm like, "Oh fuck, what the fuck!" <laughs> and it, I've never forgotten about it since. It's yeah. pretty common, right? Like, there's yeah, a, yeah, a yeah, couple yeah. people. Like, I, I guarantee, like half the people in here have had it or like know somebody who's had it. But like, yeah. what it no. is is like the doctors don't really know what causes it. Like, I, I asked him, I'm like, "What? Why did this happen?" He just goes, "Oh, like." <laughs> The fucking doctor, right? Let's check in with Daryl real quick. Yeah, I feel like a lot of Minnesota gets Taco Bell's palsy. <laughs> yeah. So Casey, I'm going to ask you this because because it's interesting. We had a guy named Al Mean on this show in uh, Des Moines, Iowa, and, um, and the, he did Nebraska, another spot yeah. before that, I believe, Omaha or Kansas or something. Anyway, he told us that he got hit with Bell's palsy after he tried to smoke weed out of a Clorox Tide <laughs> or a Tide container, like a plastic <laughs> container. Yeah. Did you do you smoke uh, things out of weird things ever? You ever smoke no, out of a I plastic just, device? I, I use regular stuff. I don't. I really don't know what happened. Like, I, <laughs> I just woke up and it was just dead. Like that's wow. And yeah. immediately, did you know what happened from Jim Ross? No, I I thought I was having a stroke. Right. But, but then I, I Googled the symptoms of stroke and realized the face was the only thing. W were you right. under, like, a lot of stress or anything? Like, anything else that you can think of that was un normal? Uh, well, they say, like, they think it's an infection in the nerves right behind your eye. Uh. And, like, a week or two before that, I got jabbed in the eye real fucking hard. Oh, so, no. Oh, my goodness. By yeah, who? How did that happen? How did you get jabbed? Myself. I was trying to put on sunglasses. <laughs> I'm not good at it. There are some real fucking dorks here in Minneapolis. I'm yeah. telling you right now. It was. It got really sunny really oh, fast. Oh man, I gotta get out of here, guys. Oh! Oh! How long does it? Oh god, my face don't work no more. <laughs> How long does it usually last? Uh, well, they say like weeks to months, but uh, you know, some people come up and like, and they're like, hey, you know, yeah, my cousin had it and it lasted seven years. So Whoa. you know, you never know. <laughs> Hell yeah, I think you're gonna have it a little while, Daryl. Yeah, I think so. I think so too. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he looks like if Jim Gaffigan played the Sugar Water Guy from Men in Black. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
absolutely yeah. does. Oh, yeah. yeah. More sugar. And you can have that. I can have that? I'm going to use um, it. What do, you, what do you do for work other than ring bells in a church <laughs> clock tower? <laughs> <laughs> he shows up to work. They're like, you look great. <laughs> Get up there. Do your job. Uh, actually, I, I'm pretty much a stand-up comic. That's pretty much what I Hell do. yeah. I love it. And you've been doing this, what, four or five years? Four and a half. Four and a half years. Look I fucking you. know it. Because, you you know, the way that you're able to, uh, the way that you were able to turn that into a, uh, when did it happen again? Uh, about a month ago. Yeah. yeah. Then you're already, I mean, it just feels so natural. You, yeah. You, you know. And I was really writing jokes before I went to the hospital. Of course. Yeah. Real. Yeah. No, exactly. That's the, that's what real comedians do is everything that happens. It's like, fuck. And then immediately you're like, ooh, this could be fucking good. <laughs> instantly. Yeah. Instantly. Yeah. That is so fucking cool. Four and a half, five years all here yeah. in Minneapolis. Most of it, yeah. You get yeah, work it at work clubs. the road a lot, but you yeah. Get, yeah? Yeah. That's so great. You get, uh, and uh, like... Where play? Have you ever like you work with other people? Open for anyone big or anything like that? Uh, I open for uh, Josh Blue four uh-huh. or five times. Oh, uh, cool! He's a good guy from St. Paul. Heck yeah! Would You're you both have... handicapped. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, his, that, wait, a different kind of palsy, but yeah. yeah. His legs, are, his legs are like your face. <laughs> yeah, his whole body. Yeah, <laughs> his Heck left yeah. hand is like my left face. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Well, what else about you, Casey? What else would we be interested to know about you? Uh, man, I don't know. That last joke about uh, going down to my girlfriend, I got to do one set at a time. She wrote that. So oh, that's so cool. Really, I can't take the credit for it. No, I love that. Just that's like painting cool. the fence, you got to do one shot at a time, you know? How long have you been with your girlfriend for? Uh, about four months. Four months. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, what does she do? She is a hairdresser and also a comedian. Oh, she also does yeah. comedy. Yeah. Look at that. that she's is way better than I am. But really? really? How is long she here is tonight? How long uh, is no, she's not here. How long has she been doing it for? Uh, about two years. Wow. That is so fucking cool. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah, she's great. Well, I love your style, man. You're absolutely <laughs> hilarious. Great fucking performance tonight and uh, just great overall stuff. Congratulations Thank to you, so Casey. Much. We'll Thank see you again soon. There he goes, Casey Flesh. He's on Twitter, Casey Flesh, K-A-S-E-Y-F-L-E-S-C-H. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's right. This was, a, uh, this was that show. You know, I just want to take a moment to let you know that uh, Infinite CBD offers the cleanest, healthiest, and purest forms of CBD available. CBD gives you all the benefits of marijuana without getting high. And I recommend Infinite CBD in a lot of ways. The end result is Infinite CBD products are over 99% CBD. Other companies use CBD oil, not Infinite CBD. This is the purest CBD you can find, and it is third-party tested for guaranteed purity. Yeah, it's it's really great, man. They have a whole bunch of different... I like the lotions. Like if you have like a, your neck is sore or you uh, want to rub it all over your friend's body, mm-hmm. uh, it's really great. Uh, they, the gummies are great also. Uh, yeah. CBD, you, mu- you know, it's everywhere, and you hear... All these new companies popping up all the time. The coolest thing about Infinite CBD is that you know they test the purity. A third party does do that, and I think that's pretty important because you never know what you're buying at some of the other CBD companies. It's true. I love the CBD pills with caffeine. It's great for when I need to focus, be calm, and get stuff done. It works for me, and research has shown it helps people for a variety of ailments, pain management, anxiety, insomnia, and more. The point is, they've got a large product line, and if you go to InfiniteCBD.com, you can see which one of their products is going to help you live a healthier life. So go to InfiniteCBD.com, and if you use the promo code TONY15, you get 15% off your order. That's InfiniteCBD.com and promo code TONY15. You guys want to go back to the bucket one more time, huh? Man, a lot of names in this fucking bucket. It's a fun show tonight, huh? You guys have fun? Pulled another name out of the bucket. Make some noise for Tyler Anderson, everybody. Tyler Anderson. Here we go. There he comes. Where is he? Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Tyler Anderson. This is great. This is great. Man, people from Minnesota are so great, right? Right? We have our northern accents. It's fucking awesome, right? Uh... Except, of course, a lot of us say we don't have northern accents until you meet someone from Brainerd. 
you know. Uh, I was at my mom's house the other day, and uh, her friend comes over, Marie. She walks in the door. Well, that's a real nice car you got out there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my son Ian, he plays the trumpet down at the U. Well, they got free concerts every Thursday. You should take your friends. Yeah, Marie, that's exactly what I want to fucking do on a Thursday with my homies. So I'm at this fucking concert, right? And I look to my left, no, not even shitting you, there is Marie, she looks right back at me, she throws up the rocker symbol. Hell yeah! That's it. Yeah now, Tyler Anderson. Very cool. First time doing stand-up? First time. Heck yeah. And uh, it's so nice of you to take a break from delivering pizzas to swing by here and, uh, mm-hmm. and do that for us. How'd you know? Do you really deliver pizza? I deliver pizza. That's what you wow. do for work? I fucking deliver pizza, man. At, are pizza, you? pizza Luce, Richfield, you know. Fuck yeah. Are you fucking serious? I swear to God. So you dress like a pizza delivery guy even when you're not delivering pizzas? <laughs> Black undershirt, well, red I, shirt. I don't just deliver pizza, though. Oh, what else do you do? I also sell vegetables on the side of the road. Really? What kind of vegetables? You don't look Mexican. <laughs> uh, what kind of vegetables do you sell? Uh, sweet corn, tomatoes, onions, whatever grows in Minnesota. Damn. Wow, that is incredible. This yeah. is what um, many Minnesota Mexicans look like. Yeah. Just <laughs> white guys. <laughs> My goodness. Showing off their ankles. The truck farm, MN.com. All right, settle down. Sorry, sorry. Settle, settle down. Look at you. You're wearing capris. You're rocking yeah, it. A second. little hip style, huh? I've you're never seen shoes shaped like that before. <laughs> yeah, that's from. Uh, that's you know what that's from. That's from fucking. Uh, that's from the grease and the in the pizza joints. It gets in your the rubber. Uh, the it looks like fat feet to me. <laughs> gets into it's, the rubber the and then it tilts up. I know about it. I worked at a. Uh, I worked at a pizza place for a while. No shit. Yeah, I made pizzas when I was uh, when I was in high school. And Uptown Pizza, you Youngstown, it. Ohio. You hated Belmont it. Belmont Avenue. I made. I, me too. What'd you say back there? I also worked at Starbucks. What, are you the same guy from the other night? That is so fucking weird. There was a guy at a show two shows ago that when I, I quoted another one of my jobs working in restaurants, and guy goes, "No, uh, Starbucks." And I'm like, well, I also did that when I started stand-up. That's a different time. I've had different jobs. That guy, that guy clearly works at Starbucks as well, and yeah. he's proud that you worked at Starbucks at one point. It's true. And he's like, don't lie about your past. I love you. Yeah. No, it's true. Definitely true. You ever, uh, you ever deliver a pizza and a lady hit on you? Uh, no, not really. The people invite you in your house, and I'm never comfortable, so I'm like, eh, I'm okay. Get some. You've never gone in? Nothing's yeah. been happening, like the Super Bowl or anything like that? You're like, I'll check the score? Yeah, not really. I don't have really that many cool pizza stories. Really? Huh. Honestly. It's, How about it's real life stories when you're not delivering pizza? Anything uh, Anything interesting about you or uh, any ever happened to you? Anything well, we I'm getting know married next year. Oh, really? Wow. Look at that. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry, ladies. Wow. What how long you collective been collective sigh. How long <laughs> Yeah. How yeah long, you heard it, you heard it. How long you been with her for? Uh four years. A little four over years. four years. Heck yeah. yeah. What what, it, what what does she look like? Extra large with pineapple? Uh <laughs> In some areas, yeah. 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 Ooh, she's got big boobs. Oh, yeah. That's what you indicated with your hand. That's Pepperoni right. nipples. Hell, yeah. She's got those what was your name again? Tyler. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. So uh, what does she do? Uh, what does she do? She does a lot of things. She works uh, at Aveda corporate office, like the, the you know, the Aveda products, hair products. Oh, and wow. We all see, that shit. We see who wears the capris in this relationship. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get a discount. Uh, and then she also nannies as well, like once a week. You? She nanny <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. That's a full-time gig. Yeah. What, uh, what color are these kids? <laughs> uh, they're white, uh, I believe, white. Yeah. Where does she nanny at? North Loop? Uh, no, actually. Uh, uh, I think South Minneapolis. I think she could diversify her portfolio. Uh, yeah. You might have some half Asian, half black kids coming up pretty soon <laughs> if you want to. Yeah, dude, they're coming. Some cha- some Blackie Chans. <laughs> Blackie <laughs> Chans. <laughs> yeah. That was good. I love it. Uh, wow, well, that's interesting, Tyler. Yeah. Um, again, do you have any hobbies? Anything fun that you like to do? <sighs> yeah. 
You ever go mountain biking here in Minnesota? Uh, no, no. I do so. I do some indoor rock climbing, but I'm not like too you, good. You also it. sell produce. Do you have a farm, or do you just go to the grocery store and buy a lot of carrots? Or <laughs> it's, it's sort of like that. No, I actually source from local farms. I don't grow anything. Oh, I grow a little bit. I have a garden, but not much. But I, I source from a bunch of different farms, and I have uh, two roadside stands. I'm adding a third one this year. It's That's doing great. pretty well. I so, love it. Yeah. I just yeah. listen. People to love I- sweet corn here, so. I love it, Tyler. And this was your first time on stage? Uh, yeah, yeah. Congratulations. I think I did a play when I was like in middle school. but uh, Yeah, what you, what'd, you, what'd you play in the play? God, I think I'd say it was like a backup part. Oh, no, no. Actually, I sung a song, I'm pretty sure. Wow. I sung a song. You're pretty yeah. sure. Yeah, I can't. You better sing it now. He doesn't even remember if he sang a song. He's not going to remember the goddamn song. I definitely don't remember the song. He's got one no, shoddy no, no. memory. I you the, like you have the memory. That one? That song? Is it Beetlejuice? Daylight <laughs> comes and I want to go hey, oh. home. Don't stop it. Freddie Mercury is rolling in his grave right now. <laughs> Freddie, the, Mer- hey. Freddie Mercury just got AIDS again. <laughs> All right, there he goes. Tyler Anderson, everybody. We got him up and out quick. What do you think? We should go one more time, right? And then get out of here. No matter what happens. What do you think? You think we should do that? Really? You think so? Really? You think so? What? He, I think, uh, okay, well, let's do that. We've seen this guy with the ukulele in a few of the cities that we've been to, uh, and he hasn't gotten pulled out of the bucket. What do you say we give him a shot, huh? He's been following us around the country. Here he comes. Let's see what happens here. Put your hands together for, your what is it? Cousin Vinny? Put your hands together for Cousin Vinny, everybody. He's got a fucking ukulele. Let's go out on a bang. This has been one of our favorite episodes this week. You ready to fucking end it? Cousin Vinny, everybody. All right, this song's for a beautiful Latina woman that couldn't make it tonight. Her name was Jolina. (laughs) Ah, man. Jolina. Oh, sorry. (laughs) Jolina jacked me off in the back of a bus. Jolina, you jacked me off. Was it love or lust? You jacked me off on a train, jacked me off on a plane, jacked me off in the rain, jacked me off, and now I'm in pain. Jolina, you jacked me off in the back of a truck. Jolina, you jacked me off and we did not fuck. You jacked me off everywhere, jacked me off in your hair, jacked me off on your snare, jacked me off and you don't care. Jolina, you jacked me off. You jacked me off. You jacked me off. You jacked me off. Wow, look at that. Cousin Vinny, how fucking awesome. That was great. Wow, paying tribute to uh, the great Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez's character. Hey, I'm fucking wet right now, eh? <laughs> hey, 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 look out. Look out! What was that? That rang a bell. Uh, m- my goodness, that was awesome, uh, cousin Vinny. See, all right. You ever you ever do? <laughs> I just com- got even wetter. Hey, <laughs> you ever do comedy before? No, sir. And you wrote that just for this? Yes. And what si- What? Where did we see you at before? Des Moines. Just Des Moines. Heck yeah! And how how long did you drive to get here? Uh, three hours. And how long did you drive to get to Des Moines? Three hours. Three hours. Hell yeah. Everything's three hours. What, do you have a fucking DeLorean? <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. I love it, Casey. What do you, or I mean, uh, I mean, Cousin, Cousin Vinny, what do you do for work? Well, I quit my last job Thursday. Wow. What was that? Taco was, Bell? I was, mm, <laughs> I was a custodian. Oh, yeah? At an elementary school. At an elementary school. And you're like, fuck this shit. Yeah. Did you leave or did they force you to leave? I left. 
Okay. Heck yeah. You look, it must be hard being a janitor in an ele- elementary school when you look like one of the students. Yep. They're just like, hey, hey, what, what class do you have next period? <laughs> I'm the janitor, kid. Get out of here before I hit you with this mop. All right, I don't know. Uh, so how long were you a janitor in an elementary school? Uh, like four years. Four years. Now what's your next move? What are you going to do? Well, I just got accepted a job at Camp Dodge in Iowa. Oh, that's um, cool. As a custodian. Oh, hey, look at that. <laughs> Moving on up. Yeah. Hell yeah. At a car dealership, a custodian at a car dealership? Is that what you said? Camp Dodge. It's what? a military oh, base. Oh, do- I thought it was a Dodge dealership or something. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Floors need to be my puto. <laughs> Simone. I love that. And how long have you been playing the ukulele for? Like two years. I love it. That is so cool. Um, I'll tell you, man. Thank you so much for writing that song. You took us out on a big bang. That was a fucking awesome thing. Thank, how about a hand for Thank you. Cousin Vinny? Thank you. How about a hand for Daryl for recommending that idea, huh? That's fun. We did it, guys. That's Kill Tony Minneapolis. Did you guys have fun? Action-packed two-hour show for you. So much fun. Heck, yeah, there he goes, Cousin Vinny. Uh, so much fun tonight. Uh, be sure to get your tickets for uh, for Philly, New York City, and all the other fun things coming up. Uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of fun things coming up and a couple announcements right around the corner to finish out our touring for the year of 2019. How about a hand good and loud Minneapolis for the great and powerful Jeremiah Watkins. <laughs> Daryl! Yeah, baby! He did it again! Jeremiah's got the new Reagan and Watkins album. It's uh, it's at the top of the charts. Be sure to get it. ReaganandWatkins.com. Listen to Jeremiah Wonders. A lot of fun episodes out right now. Pete Holmes. More roadcasts coming out soon and other fun things. And uh, follow him on YouTube at Jeremiah Watkins. Follow him on social media at Jeremiah Stand Up. And he's got some dates coming up. Phoenix, San Diego. Where yeah, else? Yeah, June 28th. Reagan and Watkins is headline down in San Diego. And then uh, also coming up uh, July 18th. Reagan and Watkins uh, will be headlining Stand Up Live in Phoenix. Joel Berg will be opening for us. As well as uh, the twenty, uh, the the twenty first, uh, we're down in Huntington Beach uh, with Joel Berg and uh, William Montgomery. So, hey, uh, look, look at that! Taking the cast with them. How about a hand for? Him? How loud can this place get for the great Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez? Huh? <laughs> he put it all on the line for you here tonight. That was a true Mexican drum off. It's his first ever time in Minneapolis, Minnesota. What do you think, Joel? I mean, this is dope. I'm a huge fan of Atmosphere. It's cool to be in the home of Atmosphere. Hey. Shout out to Clash Drums for hooking up the sweet uh, Ludwig Vintage Snare. Yes. I love you guys. If you guys ever need drums, need to rent drums, need to buy drums, go to Clash Drums. They were very cool. Uh, it was one of those things on this one where I actually took care of it uh, myself. I, I literally called there. Uh, it, was, it was a very helpful staff. They put me right through to Jeremy, who was there, and literally we took care of this entire thing in two minutes. So he's so cool. I could tell you that if he's that cool to me, he'll be that cool to you here in uh, Minnesota. So check out Clash Drums. That's Clash with a K. And, uh, yeah, we did it again, Red Band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Minnesota, we love you. Thank you so much. Good night. We are going to be... Uh, we're going to be uh, selling uh Yeah. We're going to uh, we're going to be selling uh posters, pins and uh, the new Reagan and Watkins album right over there in just a couple minutes. Uh, so if you want to make a straight line, we'll take pictures with you. We'll sign your poster if you get one and whatever else you want to tell us about whatever. We love you. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>